Hello, how are you, Georgius? Nice to meet you again. Hey, thanks for having me again. And today we're going to start with the fire element, which is two planets for sure that come under it, Sun and Mars. And today we're going to talk about Mars. And Mars is fire, anger, willpower. It's an outward planet. Why I'm interested in all these things or planets or energies is this, this, this is not, it's, it's inside us also, right? And it affects us. Like if we have more of Mars inside us, we will be more action-oriented, more determined, more angry, so depending how it falls in your chart. So everything we have around us in the sky, in the trees, in the environment affects us, it impacts us everything we take in and also we make it our own, but also what we give out and it impacts other people. So it's a two way road, right? And then the question comes, are we just passive victims of what's happening? No, when it comes inside, we have some choices, but the choice is only available when we are aware, self-aware. When we are just reactive to our inner patterns, we are not, having choices, this is what I think. But when we are aware of who we are, how we are, then we get choices to be or not to be. So that is why I'm so interested always in these energies. So tell me, Georges, what do you say about Mars? Yeah, that's a very good introduction. Again, you remind us of having a worldly perspective. So when I look at Mars, I'm thinking, well, what around me? reflects on Mars. What is Mars when I look around? Well, it's when a blacksmith hits the forge and he feels determined to act. He feels like he has to work. There's, there's a work aspect of Mars because Mars is about survival mm -hmm. because it rules the sign of Aries, which is the first sign. Um, the fire element it's not the first element. And yet, it is the spirit, the spirit of fire that helps us to survive. Without mm -hmm. Mars, we couldn't survive because the world is not safe. It's not a safe place. So we need to fight. We need to protect. Mm -hmm. We need to defend ourselves. So it's our ability to make sure that we can survive. Yeah. You know, it's like when you are in a village, and another village wants to get your stuff. Like the lion wants to eat you. Then it's Mars that allows you to fight back, to defend yourself, and it allows you to work so you can use the hammer and the sickle, like in the communist mm -hmm. science. It's a red flag also with the communists. In the color red, it comes again around us when you see it, the bull going angry. Because even the bull at an instinctive level, he knows red means go. Mm -hmm. Go. So Mars is like the, the sign, okay, this is where we go, where we have to go in. We need to have yeah. courage. Yeah. You're right about uh, fire being red and go. And our blood is red, which is again Mars. And energy, only fire gives energy. No other element, space or water or earth or air gives energy. Everything is powered by fire, right? Whether it's a train engine or it's us. So the only thing that gives us ability to do anything or even to choose is fire. Very important planet, Mars. Mm -hmm. And how do you think uh, it is in Aries? In Aries, since it's the first sign, well, if you have Mars and Aries, and this is where Mars should be happy, right? Mm -hmm. you, 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 you want something, you go for it. Mm -hmm. Like it's almost too simple with this Mars. Yes. Unless your Mars is heavily aspected or afflicted, just mm -hmm. Mars and Aries itself should be super simple, super basic. I want something, I'm going to work for it, I'm going to go towards it. Why do I want it? Because it's for my survival. My survival depends on it, actually. Um, it's about the will, Mars, because the will is making sure that you get what you want. 
So these people should be very, very good at getting what they want. Mm -hmm. And they are the last people, just by the sign and placement alone, to consider other people and what they want. Because it's, it's also a placement of competition. It's, it's that we get frustrated because we see that the world is, is trying to work against us. There's a, a, a will that we need to assert here. And if we don't push back, yeah. it's not going to work. And this pushback is deeply felt with a Mars Aries individual. They feel like they have to do this when the moment arises and they have to make a choice. But their job is to be pushing. So Aries, I would say, is very simple, straightforward, and less complex in the sense, I need this X, Y, Z for my survival. I should go ahead. And their simplicity can be taken as people can be offended by it, but actually they're just very straightforward and taking the shortest space towards survival. There is no complexity here. Mm -hmm. They're actually very clear and clean in a way. <laughs> yeah, so that's why it operates so well because the fire can flow easily through the person yeah. energetically. Yeah. How do you, what do you think about their anger over here? I think here, anger goes very short. The person gets angry because they feel like they're supposed to push and they're supposed to act. They just act on the anger immediately. It doesn't mm -hmm. fester. No, it doesn't hold on. It's just for the purpose and then that's it. They don't that's hold right. on to it. Right. Okay, and what about Taurus, which is an earth sign, more of a provider sign? Yeah, well, here... The, fr the, the frustration, the, the function of drive and desire and pushing of Mars is in the area of material possessions, money accumulation, stability, also family. So gathering those things that you need to have a safe base mm -hmm. from which to operate on. So this is a very interesting energy because Mars is about going out, going after stuff. But here the energy is focused on staying in, making sure that you can stay where you are. So these are people, they can work very hard, mm -hmm. be, not because they are going for something, but they want to keep what they have. You okay. mentioned frustration. They get frustrated because they feel as if, if I don't have enough of the future, I'm going to have to work more in the future and I don't want to work. It's actually a very lazy energy because if you think about it, Taurus ruled by Venus is about maintaining that comfort. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the person gets motivated to preserve the comfort that they have. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so fixed. It wants to stay, there's a staying power there. Yeah. So they, they stick to a single job, a single way of being, and they have a very hard time to change things up. So if you just look at the elements, earth and fire, you know fire, earth is very good at putting a boundary on fire, you know, and Mars is a natural fire. It seems like their, their fire is turned inwards and they have to be patient, you know, because they have to work for longer term goals compared to the Aries. Yeah. And uh, they're looking for long term survival, long term foundation building so yeah i mean their anger would be more under the surface i would believe yeah because they feel that anger needs to be a productive influence needs to serve my stability but anger itself if you think about it threatens stability Yes. It's the complete opposite of what Taurus actually represents. Yes. It's not the worst placement by any means, but it's just. It's, uh, I mean, if you if 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 you want to fight for stability, you fight for stability. Yeah. But but you know, that you need to fight, right? So these yeah. people, I think, because they feel as if they're supposed to preserve stuff. Pre preservers of the home of the village uh, yeah. harvesters crop seeders like people who, who they put something and then their goal is to grow it 
and we, the, the fire gets motivated by the goal, the end goal. Yeah. And whatever upsets them in the moment, the present, it's not the priority. More like marathon runners. That's right. Yeah. Sure. Okay, and how are the how is Mars in Gemini an air sign? Yeah. Well, in Gemini, we have the sign of being a bridge between the mind and the body. Mm -hmm. And Mars itself belongs to the will. And the will is then focused on ideas, thoughts that we share, information that we redistribute. So the person feels a very strong urge to get the information out. Get the information out, learn more. And then the person is like, oh, I'm so eager, like I need to say this now. But why? Maybe the person survive it depends on what they have to say. Mm. And it's through their words that they get what they want. Yeah. Is it a comfortable placement for Mars? I think it's not bad at all. I think I like it actually because elementally just the air, it helps the fire, it, it fuels it's, it. A, it fuels it, yeah. And Gemini is breath. And you have this fire with Mars and the breath like, and then it gets stronger. Uh, as soon as I take in information and the environment asks for my response, because Gemini also roots with siblings. If I have siblings and they tell me something, I may have quarrels with the siblings with this Mars. Mm -hmm. I may have also quarrels with other people because they have different ideas. Yeah. I want to assert my ideas on the world. But the good thing is mm -hmm. the energy is so strong because yeah. the, the, the Gemini is good at bringing those thoughts out. Just talking. It's easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not like uh, a fixed Aquarius who says, oh, they don't like my ideas and I'm going to go that route. No, the Gemini says, ah, I don't care. I'm just going to do it. It's more easy going. More like the influencer, but also a little difficult to be with other ideas, right? Yes. Yes, they have difficulty. Um, they may have arguments with other people quite a lot. Because they want to prove their prowess, their power. It's like Mars roots muscles. Yes. This person's muscles are in the brain. <laughs> <laughs> That's right? a good analogy. Brain of a brawn. It's with his placement. And they assert their masculine dominance through their mm. mind, their intellect. Okay. Very interesting. So in that sense, if we move to cancer, which is emotional, <laughs> their muscle would move to emotions. Yes, yes, you can look at it that way. The strongest muscle will be the gut muscle. The feeling that says, oh, watch out, protect, mm -hmm. protect yourself from the situation. Which, of course, is like, that's why Marsh doesn't traditionally, in tropical, like the cancer. Because okay. cancer means I protect my home. The good thing is, however, it's a cardinal energy. Mm -hmm. Because cancer is the sign of the water signs that acts on what they feel. It is actually in alignment with Mars. But the problem is, what am I acting on? I'm acting on my need to protect myself. So it's not about taking charge and going out there to... Mm -hmm. It's not really about that. It's about, again, like Taurus, to preserve what I already have. And there's this certain tendency to um, to hold on, yeah. to, to, to wait. Okay. And Mars doesn't like waiting, does it? No. It's about the present. And Cancer is not about the present. So Mars is often called a soldier. And a soldier it protects everyone, right? Yeah. But in the cancer, it's more like, let me protect myself. Yeah, let, 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 me, let me protect how everybody feels, but specifically how I feel. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get into quarrels with people because those quarrels, they frustrate me too much. Anything that negatively affects my feelings, cancer, 
will lead to that frustration, which forces me to act. But to, in order to act, I need to, cr to go out of my shell, the cancer shell. And cancer doesn't want to do that, right? It wants to stay in the comfort zone, kind of like Taurus, which is why it's also called the moon. And the moon is, it, 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 it is about self-control, actually. And so, Mars doesn't like self-control. So this is more of an inner, inner conflict will be more in this person. Yeah, they play the wars out in, within themselves and they're hoping normally that as long as they can keep the emotions under control, that the external world will be in control as well. But that rarely is the case with these individuals. And um, they basically need to learn how to be okay with cracking out of the shell mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Because these people need to crack open mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. So they're like the change in tides. And of course, this can be very disruptive as mm -hmm. an influence. Mars is already disruptive. And mm -hmm. now you're telling me that I need to be like the moon coming and going all the time with my emotions, being intense one day, then calm one day. And I'm supposed to be doing that. That's very difficult. Yeah, it makes people feel insecure. Yeah, because we have tides twice a day. So maybe they have struggles <laughs> daily. The war zone is within, as you said, because Mars is goes where the war is, right? That's exactly. where Mars shows up. Okay, and this is one of the supposed to be the worst placements, like where Mars <laughs> is weakest. Yeah, it is interesting though, isn't it? Because, well... It's Emotions is not its forte, huh? <laughs> or comfort. It's it's it's. I think the reason why is because people regard this person with a Martian Cancer as either very very turbulent, like as an emotionally unstable, because Mars is in the sign of emotions, or they hold in everything. They're like passive aggressive, trying to avoid the issue that you're supposed to confront. And like the crap, Cancer Mars rules sideways, doesn't approach things directly. Mm -hmm. And that's really a problem. So these people need to find balance. Yeah. yeah. Now we can move on to Leo, which is again another fire sign. So they should be friends over here. <laughs> yeah, of course, right? It's fire and it's ruled by the heart. Already Mars is an ego-centered planet because it's about the needs of the self. And Leo is still in the lower half of the chart. It's, it still belongs to the self and its needs take priority. So it's very good for the Mars because Mars is really about our own desires, which we can fulfill. Well, Leo says, yeah, yeah, let me fulfill my desires and let me uh, bulldoze everything around me just to get to my target, just so I can feel mm -hmm. successful about myself, so I can feel like I'm in the center. Sounds, <laughs> in the sounds <laughs> like Mars on steroids. <laughs> yes, actually. Like these people, they can sometimes, uh, there's, a, there's too much almost. That's the only difficulty I see. The good thing is they get things done. Yes because they want to be recognized for their ability to be productive, to be able to always do things on the get-go. So this is a person who is rewarded early on in their life for reacting very quickly mm -hmm. to a situation. So it's the kind of leader I'd want in a war zone where you want everybody to be taken care of very quickly. <laughs> yeah, but thrive in the war. I wouldn't want to be with him in a peacetime. <laughs> <laughs> And how about in Virgo, which is again another earth sign, but a different kind of earth sign? Yeah, that's actually my placement in the tropical zodiac. So I can speak from experience. Mars and Virgo, they get workaholic, which is kind of sounds very cliche, but they do because the mind is so critical, it gets frustrated all the time by mistakes. <laughs> yeah. the perfectionist really comes out because Mars says hmm, in the sign of health 
self-refinement and improvement, I'm getting frustrated if I can't maintain my refined cleanliness, my, my position of where mistakes are minimized to the utmost. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is, there's some kind of happiness here because Mars rules the muscles and Virgo rules bodybuilding. Okay. And this is the, the bodybuilding placement, number one. Like you see lots of bodybuilders of Mars in the six oh. times. Virgo. Because Virgo says, better, 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 more, more, more. Ooh. Or you will get frustrated if you don't keep going. And this is where the workaholic nature comes yeah, in. Because so fire says, go, all go. All the go, fuel better. is here. The whole warehouse of fuel is given to Virgo. <laughs> Yes, and Virgo is very happy with it, really. Yeah. No one can yeah. stop me now. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very similar to Capricorn. You know how it's exalted in Capricorn, we'll talk about that later, which also is an earth sign. Well, Virgo is very similar. It just wants to fix the thing. Mm -hmm. In other words, wants to reach a certain goal. Mm -hmm. The only problem is that the goal is sometimes... Too far. A little bit too uh, high. Too high. Yes, exactly. It's too high. It's too yeah, picky. So too critical. Obviously, with the earth signs, the goal is really far away, whether it is Taurus or oh, yes. Capricorn right. or Virgo, because one is protecting the foundation, the other one is going reaching for perfection, which is like infinity, right? And then Capricorn, which is a little mm -hmm. different, but we will come to that. And what, how is their expression of anger in Virgo? Oh, it's very tactical, strategic. Because the Virgo Mars person thinks, hmm, if I take action, it must get a solution for the problem that I have. Like, it must be controlled. Yeah. This is a Virgo thing. It's a Virgo thing to have control, like all the Earth signs, of course. That's the only detriment for Mars. However, the critical nature of Virgo does help. Yeah. It's, a, it's supposed to be one of the most honest signs. Like, yeah. for example, food critics would be like a Virgo Mars. So they are, you, what I'm hearing you say is that the uh, anger is only ex expressed to further the goal, not as a personal. Exactly. To help somebody with something. But the problem is, sometimes a person thinks the end justifies the means. Yeah. So I don't care how it makes you feel, but I'm going to give you mm. this criticism. I'm going to give you this advice. I'm going to tell you, you need to do this. Mm -hmm. So there can be, there can be quarrels there at work, right? Like the colleagues say, oh, I, why do you want me to work so hard on this? Why are you so picky? Yeah. Because there's no space for people if you have so many high goals. So the goal is all encompassing, right? It's, yeah. the, uh, it's the god they worship <laughs> it's opposite to pisces it's it's not about love and compassion mm. it's about judgment get judged. and mars says get that judgment judge that <laughs> mm. okay nice to know that okay then we can move on to the next sign which is libra mm. how does it do in this swinging air sign it's not happy, right? I mean, it shouldn't be, if you think about it. it shouldn't yeah. be at, at first sign because, again, Libra is ruled by Venus, but here is the opposite of Aries. And, yes, it is just the opposite. Yeah. And of course, if, if anybody knows anything about Libra, they can, they can figure themselves out why Mars has difficulty here. Because Mars is focused on keeping the peace. Mars is focused on making people happy. Mars is focused on keeping the harmony, fighting. It's not really Mars' job. Yeah, it's not the Mars' job, exactly. <laughs> it's the soldier. You can't do the diplomat's job. Yes, yes. So, so it's very strange. It I would ask, how, why does this person have Mars in Libra? Yeah, why? Well, apparently, they are asked to work together with others. Yeah. And they're not allowed to, to assert their own will on their own. It's like this person, they succeed 
when they involve other people, when other people are on board. And that's actually also an ability of these people. Like they're very, very good at recruiting people. Like when you are in, in a firm, okay. you need to recruit yeah. new members. Because also, like Virgo, but a different kind of judgment, it was judgment, but judgment of people instead of things. So Mars brings the frustration here to get your judgment straight, make the right choices. So the person may feel as if, if I judge this person, I need to find a way to work together with them, but I'm also judging them. Yeah. How can I do this right? How can I make the correct decision? Sounds like a position of struggle. How do their, how do their anger get expressed? They'll express it in a way, well, there's two ways actually. One way is, I feel something and I don't know how it's going to work for me unless I'm alone. Like when a person is alone, there's no other people involved, there's nobody else. It's not really much different from Aries Mars. Like I feel I need to do this, so I do it. But the problem is Libra is an airhead. We always think about the thing. Oh, is this really the right decision? Is this really right? And the fire can get stuck in the head with this placement more than any other placement. So we can struggle from, um, like the will is just getting, mm. you know, the will is supposed to come out of here and then the action mm. finishes. Mm -hmm. But they're still deliberating the action. Because Mars says, if you don't make the right action, I'm going to frustrate you. So these people get angry with themselves, first of all. Reminds me of Hamlet. To be or not to be, and in the end, he does nothing, you know? <laughs> exactly, yes. That's very so, right. so you said in the Cancer, the war zone is in the feelings. Here, the war zone is in our th heads, exactly. right? Okay. Again, very difficult for the person inside, right? Yeah. And uh, again, we come to Scorpio, which is a water sign, and Mars is own sign, but... Mars is more comfortable actually in Aries instead of Scorpio, but it is its own sign. So tell me, how is Mars here? It's quite interesting because uh, Scorpio is about self-control. Okay. And uh, Mars is not. <laughs> so it's, it's quite funny, actually, that it is ha quite happy in the sign. But the reason is because the Mars is waiting. For the right moment is waiting for the right thing to focus on the ambition is becoming more refined yes, so if you think about the fact that virgo is about transformation well you could also say it's about improvement but improvement of a psyche the choices the psyche makes in getting what you want getting power over the world over other people Scorpio here says, with Mars, I'm going to frustrate you if you don't feel powerful in what you're doing. There needs to be a sense of power and control at all times. So this Mars says, are you in control? If you're not, mm. time to get angry so you can get back into control. So, you, so Mars in Scorpio is searching for self-empowerment. Mm -hmm. Which 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 people say Scorpio people are very vindictive. Uh, they look for opportunities to emotionally manipulate. Is that so? They look for opportunities which allow them to have a maximum amount of control over the situation, and this is what gives him success. And this is actually why Mars is so happy here. Because the impulse of fire, the impulse is very strong. It's like acid, Scorpio. Yes. Instead of, instead of having fire or water, you have acid. Acid. And this acid medium is full of energy. Like when you have a battery, you need mm -hmm. acid for that electricity to run. Mm -hmm. And the marsh is so happy because 
once the asset is bubbling, the person knows, oh, I have the asset working for me. As long as the asset is there, I will have success. Mm. So it's it's really, there's a certain harmony within, actually, about how to use that asset towards success. In between the difference between Aries and Scorpius, Aries is very overt, and this is very covert. They will even hide their motivation so that the person in front doesn't really know what's happening, the true picture. They share a similarity with Virgo because they're looking for the maximum outcome. For themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, Scorpio has a lot of negative stereotyping attached to it, but let's just say that it is positively empowered Scorpio Mars. How would it achieve its goals? What would it look like? Because there's an authenticity with Scorpio. And Scorpio wants to heal people, wants them to get better. Really? Just like Virgo wants to serve people like a nurse or a doctor. Yeah, yeah. Scorpio wants to be the psychologist to understand where's the problem coming from. How can I strike at the heart of the problem to help yeah. others? How can I make people naked with Scorpio? But Mars says, I will act. I will trigger people. I will provoke the nakedness out of them so they can show me who they are. Mm -hmm. So, so they can be comfortable about who they are. So they're no longer hiding it. Mm -hmm. Because I am looking for getting that hidden stuff out. I'm, I'm charging towards it. Yeah. There's this double meaning, triple meaning. There's so many angles you can look mm -hmm. at Mars in the sign. Mm -hmm. All of these angles are happening at the same time. These different perspectives. So Scorpio, Mars, what kind of professions? Are they more like leaders, dictators, or are they more psychologists? Or are they half and half? Yeah, well... There's a piercing quality with Scorpio that has a specific yes. purpose, which is to uncloak something, mm. reveal something. It's about exposure. Right. So Mars frustrates the person when things are being hidden from them. Okay. People are hiding who they are, keeping secrets. So they get the secrets out to reveal to everyone what's really going on. Okay. And where does this vindictive um, stereotyping come from? Well, there's two reasons. Like one reason, people don't want to share their yes. secrets. So they say, oh, this person wants to destroy me. They're using my secrets against me. But Scorpio says, I don't care how this affects you. I want you to come out because only then can it change. Okay. So that's when people think, oh, it's vindictive because, well, why do they care so much? What mm -hmm. business is it, or is it of theirs? Because Scorpio rules the eighth house. Yes. And the eighth house is other people's possessions. Mm. So why, are they, why do they care about my possessions? Just stick to yourself, you know, like people say. Because they don't want that intimacy to be intruded upon. They don't want to be invaded. They don't want to be seen as who they are. And, and Scorpio cannot help seeing other people because it's other people they are always interested in. <laughs> yes. Mm, wonderful. Now we come to the next fire sign, which is uh, Sagi, Sagittarius. Mm. So Sagittarius, um, again, is fire sign, so should be, should be good, right? Mm. Only problem is it's mutable. So they can shift a lot in uh, what are they going to do next? Because That's here true. they say, mm, I want to, to expand my horizons. And if I don't learn something new, I get frustrated. Mm. If I don't learn something new, that means I have trouble sticking to one thing because they hate routine. It frustrates them. Okay. Okay. Mars is always about quarrels that we have within ourselves. What do we, wh where do we have quarrels? When we aren't doing what Sagittarius Mars wants us to do, which is to uh, grow constantly. We can't just stay in one place. It's not like Taurus March, which says, oh, just preserve what we have, make it stronger and stay there. 
No Sagittarius says, no, 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 no. Keep going. Don't stay in any place. If you stay there even for one moment, it's bad. <laughs> Staying is bad. Okay. It's like there's an ambivalence. It's it's almost like um routine allergy. It's very different from Virgo Mars. Where Virgo says, maintain the routine, or you get frustrated. Sagittarius Mars says, break the routine, or you get frustrated. Constantly. So how is Mars here? It's not really happy? The person has a difficulty to stay to one thing, but they'll find happiness if they do something in which they are forced to adapt a lot. These are the adapters. These are the people who come up with something new all the time mm -hmm. because their work demands it. These are creative people. Right. These are artists actually sometimes as well. Um, like if you think about a philosopher or a poet, which Sagittarius represents, this person is a poet because they look at things from a new perspective. All the time they get a new perspective, but they only get this perspective through their action, through their experience. So Sagittarius Mars here says, it's through new experiences that you get what you want, but your survival is ensured, which Mars represents. Okay. So this Mars is always propelling them to grow and experience because that's if, what's they happening. feel threatened if they don't grow, they feel like they're doing something wrong and it has to change yeah. quickly. Yeah. That's right. And now we come to the earth sign Capricorn where Mars is exalted. So you tell me how it is, then I'll have a I'll give an image that I have in my mind about Cap yes. uh, Mars and Capricorn. Do you have personal experience with this Mars? I do not have, but I have a beautiful anal analogy <laughs> to explain it. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Well, Mars and Capricorn, because it's about goals, and Mars says, yeah, right? Like, that's what I'm about. Like, I'm about to get you what you want. And Capricorn is a stabilizing influence at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Because it says... You need the structure to get what you want. So how are you going to do it? So a person gets frustrated without the structure, which forces them to come up with it. Come up with a plan of action that is efficient. Mm -hmm. So of course, because there's this balance of having the plan and the motivation, they usually get what they want. They usually succeed. Yes. And of course, Capricorn itself does represent worldly success and status. Well, this person gets that success through the Mars. Yeah. Through the See, warrior. What I'm seeing is that Capricorn is your highest point of achievement. And it's the 10th house, Capricorn. Mm -hmm. It means this is it. And Mars is the way, the energy, the, the, the drive, and it's given the platform. So basically what I have is that Mars is a soldier, right? It's always a disciplined army that wins the maximum battles. And the army which is indisciplined is always in the end a loser because they they might win the war, but they they might pillage, they might destroy, they might steal, they might they, they don't they drink too much. Like it's like nobody can control that army anymore. And when a army is completely disciplined the soldier is at its best behavior so oh capricorn is that mm -hmm. discipline you just gave me an idea like this is perfect actually because you know bruce lee mm -hmm. he has mars opposition saturn and this this guy he was all about controlled martial arts like to control the body, to get the most out of it, get the most out of the artistry. To, to he, he formed a whole career around it, right? Saturn is the career, Capricorn is the career. Yeah, a career through the warrior. But you have the zest, you have the fires of industry. We like to say the fire of the forge, the furnace, and then you have the discipline. Mm. Like, it's just perfect. It's exactly what you say. And that's actually what happened with Bruce Lee as well. And he, that is why he's such a good example. 
He doesn't have Mars in Capricorn. Mm. He has Mars opposition in aspect to Saturn. Which is Saturn is the Capricorn ruler is providing that energy in a way. <laughs> the general providing the boundaries. Yes. To tell the Mars at the right moment when mm. to stop. So that yeah. Mars never goes into accidents, doesn't run into trouble. Yes. It's focused energy. Yeah, very true. So a Mars with the correct boundaries is the best fire. Yes, that's right. Okay, so now we move on to Aquarius, which is actually an air sign. Mm -hmm. And again, air is very favorable to fire, supports it. Yeah, well, of course, we have a fixed sign. Mm -hmm. So these people have very strong ideas and they get into trouble, into quarrels, wars, Again. because of those ideas. Because they feel like, no, 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 no. We can't let the group be as they are. It's not about the individual. I don't care how you feel. We need to get the group ahead. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I can actually, um, I tell you about my experience with Mars. Yeah. Because I have this in my draconic chart. Yeah, in my draconic chart, and I feel like this Mars says, Look, I know what best for the group. And we need to to to, to get on board with this. And if we don't do this, we're gonna exclude those who don't belong into the group. Mm. It's like they were community leaders. Again, Mars is about leadership of some sort, but they become the leaders because they, 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 they take out people. They eliminate people from the group, mm -hmm. which doesn't allow the group to succeed and to progress. And that's why they get into so much trouble in the mm -hmm. community. And the good this... thing, however, there's Saturn involved with this Mars as well. Yes, that's true. Saturn is also the ruler here. So how does Saturn help? It's bringing that fixed thing in. Yeah, that fixed thing, that Saturn boundaries, it helps because it makes a person very cold and detached, not only from others, but also from themselves, their own ambitions. Yeah. Kind of turn to the background, which helps a little bit of containment on the Mars that says, oh, I know you're frustrated. Mm. Does it help the group? <laughs> mm. Group is the most important. Mm. But then that would mean... How is the rest of the chart of that person? If that person is benefic and more open in other parts, then it will be a good leader. But if it's a very controlled leader, then that, that's not a good placement for the group either. You know, It depends how the person is, how the leader is. A very yeah. controlled and negative person is going to make the group very uncomfortable. Because they can feel like, oh, I'm holier than thou. I know better than you. It's like the Leo Aquarius axis again. Both these signs, they have a superiority shadow. Like I know like best. <laughs> a good placement for cult leaders. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. That's exactly. Aquarius roots, cults, communities okay. of any kind. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Okay. So we come to the last one, water sign, Pisces and... I don't know. I don't think Mars would be very energetic here. <laughs> no, it wouldn't really. Water because, putting it uh, out of fire. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's the sign of dissolution, spirituality, compassion, understanding, love. What's it doing? Why is Mars there in the sign? If I look at the chart and I see Mars and Pisces, I'm thinking, my my God, what happened there? Because what had to happen for Mars to be there is that the person feels that their ambition, they can't put it out into the open, it has to be in the astral realm. It's in the mm -hmm. spiritual realm. It's They don't focus on worldly matters to survive. They survive through something transpersonal, which of course is very counterintuitive because survival is a basic thing of the physical body in the physical yeah. world. So what's the transpersonal sign doing there? You have to ask if this person was dependent on somebody else. Somebody was taking care of them. And they're hoping that it's through their compassion and through their service to others 
that they'll be taken care of again by other forces which are unconscious mm. and invisible. Do you think that this fire in this spiritual sign would also serve to uplift their spirituality, like power their spirituality, almost like an inner journey? You need energy and resources for that as well, right? Yes, these would be very good uh, movie makers and artists and actors. They, they put in a role, a cloak, to represent the spiritual realm. That which they feel on the inside that they need to do to get what they want, their desires are made manifest through their performance, their art. Mm -hmm. they, they show you an image. It's all about imagery with this Mars. Mm -hmm. Because Mars says, I can't act directly in Pisces. It's covert. It's sneaky. Just like the other water signs, right? It's always underground. But how I can go for what I want is by showing you what I want. Storytelling. That's right. Storytelling, yes. Like book writing. I'll, I'll write my desires into the book. And the book will deliver my desires to the world so I can get what I want through the production that I have made in this realm. Very interesting. I'm laughing because I have Mars in the 12th house in the second sign. So it is ringing a bell actually because it is true like there is a feeling to preserve family value or values I can say. And yet uh, this book writing and uh, storytelling or the archetype is very prominent like we it's like don't you see we are we all are like this it's <laughs> it, i'm not talking about me or you i'm talking about we all are like this yes it's like showing this is who we all are see see you know see see exactly and if i can't make you see i'm gonna get frustrated i don't want to stay invisible mars says show what's hidden you mm -hmm. must show it must be seen by others they must acknowledge that what you have inside is real you must take charge of what you have inside bring it out with a fire that is burning within you yeah and what do you think is the positive manifestation of this and a negative manifestation of this mars and pisces so the positive manifestation is they are able to get into anybody's shoes because they want everybody to understand their shoes. Yes. They, 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 they'll give you who they are because it's very personal. Again, Mars is about the ego, right? So we show our ego through the, the, the 12th house of the Pisces here. And we get so good at it that we connect to people. We form those emotional bonds. So we, we pull everyone into the ocean, like you said. We, say, we show, oh, we are all like this. So everyone becomes a collective again. Because mm -hmm. both Aquarius and Pisces are about the collective and bringing them together. Just with Pisces uses different means. Aquarius uses the intellect, uses the ideas and thinking and skills and inventions. Pisces uses their art. Mm -hmm. Reconnect people to what they're already feeling, but they can't put words to it. Mm -hmm. And the shadow side... um is that they spend a little bit too, too much time uh, thinking, oh, how do I show this? What is this? How, how, how can I show this? Because I'm afraid that if I show it to other people, it will be too dark for them. Because the Pisces thing is the collective shadow as well. Again, it's, it has to be something that people hide. So we may get into quarrels with others, because we're showing them something that they're not ready to see. Right, right. Very true. So you, the best for Pisces, Mars, is to develop that right timing, that judgment, to be, to do or not to do right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could keep saying that for every Mars, for sure. <laughs> this one specifically, yeah. So I'd like to summarize this, that basically Mars is a very simple 
an uncomplex soldier who's told do this just do it you know there's no questions asked that's his pure nature it it's given a job it has to do the job it doesn't ask why what when what happened what will happen this is its pure nature and that's why it's happy with aries and capricorn because it brings out the best of the fire but the fire in other signs it it, it it's some signs it's a perpetual challenge for the person and for others it's just like see where best you can allow your fire to be the best in that sign you know where is the that most cent central and serving best serving point you can find right that can mm -hmm. serve you so what else can they do what can people do they can just look inside see what their fire is like and see how can they just move it a little bit this side or that side to serve the interest yes and it's also about integration in traditional astrology we look at mars as a malefic yes true it's not really negative but it it brings the positive through the negative it is a forceful sign yes it is a forceful thing right it's a soldier it's not like a mother <laughs> <laughs> yes Everybody's afraid of the soldier and the police and <laughs> all the... our, our Mars shows us what we need to confront people on. To find fulfillment and peace within ourselves, mm -hmm. we need to bring the confrontation to others. The principle here. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it, if you if you do the Mars work, you you're protecting the species, you're protecting the organism, you're protecting the body, the environment. Mars you deal with mars and the rest is protected you know that's the job of mars exactly yes to ensure your survival you must do things that are uncomfortable you your reality frustrates you because it's threatening you you are in danger <laughs> and this is how you overcome the danger this is where you shine your fire to 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 fit a certain niche in the collective mm. the niche may be that you need to fix other people's problems that you need to give them new ideas that you need to challenge what they're keeping behind for other people not to see that you just mm. you you challenge reality mars mm. is the challenger where are but others challenging you and you are challenging them? You're people. constantly interacting with the outside world, but also I feel that you should look what, why that, how that same Mars is serving you. If you can see that it is not serving you and you can shift some things inside you, even in that challenging sign, it will start serving you a little bit. This is what I feel. We should also see what it is doing for us, the planet. What is our agendas behind that? Say exactly. you want to Mars, Mars in Aquarius, you're a cult. Some <laughs> cults are really good. If, if they have a vision that fits everyone and serves them, right? Yes. It's not that all cults are bad. Mm -hmm. But most of the cults just end up serving the leader. Exactly. Yes. Or because serve the, the program. The, the leader is dysfunctional and has some needs that have to be served to other people. That's not the purpose of a group, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you. That was a lovely um, discussion. And anything else you want to say and just rounding it up? Yeah. Um, again, Mars is masculinity. Masculinity, what is that? It's the ability to get what you want through action. Mm -hmm. It's not through attracting things. It's not through waiting, sitting in one location. No, you need to act. And this need to act comes from within. You get motivated because you know you don't want to get frustrated. You're not avoiding the issue. You're confronting it. Yeah. And when you know you're confronting issues, you will always feel motivated automatically. It's yeah. when you avoid 
the challenge, avoid the difficulty, avoid the discomfort, the irritation itself in your body. If you avoid triggers, you are avoiding your own ability to self yes. Yeah, You cannot avoid it. It's better to introspect the triggers. And Capricorn and Mars are blessed that they have the best combination, but we can learn from them that if you bring patience somehow, then you're bringing the quality of Capricorn and discipline to the Mars quality. So oh, there's one more, one more thing yeah. I, I have to say about Mars and Capricorn because Capricorn is the sign of suffering. Okay. Mars and Capricorn person is also very good because they're comfortable with the suffering. Mm. So they accept and uh, work with the suffering. Exactly. They know they have to work with it. Yeah. That's very important is that you're saying they kind of accept it and work with it instead of pushing it away or suppressing it or projecting it on other people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's really the key. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. And I hope we will continue this with other planets mm -hmm. uh, coming forward. Okay. Yes. Thank you once again. Thank you.